Good morning and welcome to this seventh Sunday of Eastertide, the last Sunday of Eastertide. Today we're looking at that great priestly prayer of Jesus that he says to his disciples at the Last Supper. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you. Jesus' high priestly prayer, as it's known, is about 650 words long. It takes just three minutes and possibly 30 seconds to read it, but it will take us an eternity to totally understand it. Such is the depth of what it contains. It unfolds in three main sections. Jesus prays for himself. He then prays for his apostles, who have been closely associated with him during his mission. And finally, for the unity of the future disciples. He prays for the glory of God to be restored. This is the one thing that seems to dominate this prayer. It occurs four, five, four or five times in these verses. Initially, it seems unfitting for Jesus to pray that he might receive glory for himself. But looking more closely, we find there are several observations concerning this request for glory, which put the matter into a different light. Jesus prayed for glorification in order to exalt his Father. The evangelist uses the word glory, glorification, to glorify oneself, to speak of the death of Jesus and his return to the Father. In completing his mission that his Father has entrusted to him and in dying on the cross, Jesus glorifies his Father. So we might ask ourselves the question, are we willing to live for the glory of God as we are to die for it? Then he goes on to pray for his disciples. This last testament of Jesus is that his followers will be brought into a loving union with the Father, the Father that he shares. Jesus knows that the apostles will meet rejection along the way. There will be opposition and persecution. But in spite of this, he sends them out into the world to be witnesses. So should we ask ourselves, are we prepared to be witnesses throughout the world? To bring people closer to Christ in a personal relationship with God himself and his church? This is a deep-rooted mission in our diocese at the present, and it forms the centre and core of Bishop Philip's message to us to bring people closer to Christ. He prays for Christian unity. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This prayer of unity is something that is continually needed today. With so many different Christian denominations teaching so many different beliefs, this perhaps is the greatest scandal of our time in our Christian church, that we are not one with Christ. We need earnestly then to pray for our separated brethren. That lovely prayer that we sometimes pray at the end of benediction to Our Lady, intercede for our separated brethren, so that with us the one true fold they may be united to the Supreme Shepherd, the Vicar of your Son. He goes on to pray for his apostles to be set apart, to be consecrated, to be made holy, particularly as priests. We might ask ourselves, how much do we value our priests at this time, particularly in this time of separation and isolation from them? The last two months have been hard for us. But equally, it is as hard for our priests too. They try to minister to their flock, an unseen flock. That must be frustrating for them. Do we take our priests for granted? Do we pray often enough for vocations to the priesthood? Jesus goes on then to pray that he has given his glory to us through his apostles. Everyone who receives the supernatural food of the Eucharist, including you and me, receives the glory of Christ every time we partake of the Eucharist in a state of grace. And finally, Jesus prays that the Father 
that his love will be made known to the whole world through us. This is a wonderful thing to pray for, as God is our loving Father. He's not just some disinterested bystander who couldn't care less about us. He longs for everyone to be restored in unity with the Father. Do we pray for those estranged members of our family, our friends? Are we willing to challenge those on the fringes of the church and invite them into the sheepfold to meet Jesus Christ? So in this prayer we see some very rich thoughts for us to think about as we approach the coming Feast of Pentecost. Let's place all of these prayers as Jesus has shown us in his prayer that we may be one with him and his Father. Thank you.